physical equilibrium is ultimate heterogeneous reaction. It's between liquid and its vapor, so it's evaporation condensation. Imagine you have a flask that contains a liquid such as water. Uh, first thing you need to know in order to establish equilibrium, make sure the flask is closed. So cover it up. And then once you give it time, eventually the liquids, especially at the surface, they have lots of kinetic energy. They start moving up and turning into vapor. So this vapor is up here and the liquid is down here. Uh, now what happens to the vapor is they will go up and they will hit the walls of the container and then they even come back and they start hitting and condensing back into liquid. So there is an equilibrium being established between the liquid water and the gaseous water which is steam. Back and forth relationship. Now one terminology that comes to life is vapor pressure. It's the pressure that this uh, vapor are exerting on the walls of container or the liquid. So there is a pressure being produced known as vapor pressure. Now this vapor pressure is function of uh, two, uh, two items and you need to know it for sake of uh, multiple choice. Uh, one is temperature. As temperature goes up, so I'm going to write those two. Vapor pressure changes as you change one temperature. Now when temperature goes up, the vapor pressure gently goes up. For example, liquid water, it gradually goes as you increase the temperature, you have more steam, more vapor being produced. And then, for example, for liquid water, when it's 100 degrees Celsius, you will boil because now you can uh, overcome atmospheric pressure. So this is how vapor pressure works. It's not a linear relationship. It's exponential. So as temperature goes up, vapor pressure goes up. The other uh, variable that changes vapor pressure is identity of the liquid that you are dealing with. And that identity is really IMF, intermolecular forces. If you have hydrogen bonding versus, for example, van der Waals, as IMF goes up, vapor pressure actually goes down. So the molecules are strongly held and they're not going to turn into uh, gaseous. So IMF goes up vapor pressure goes down. Now there are two items that uh, doesn't change vapor pressure but IB always loves uh, to challenge you on so just remember that it is not so vapor pressure is not a function of and I'm going to give you those two so you remember it. One is is the size of the container some of you have this impression if you have your liquid in a test tube versus a li same liquid in a petri dish the liquid in the in the petri dish might create more vapor pressure that's not true so if you seal these two containers, they have the same uh, vapor pressure being produced. So vapor pressure is not function of size. Number two is the amount. Then again, some students have the impression if you have a little bit of something, it's going to, uh, for example, if you have two test tube, and in one you have this much liquid, and the, in the other one you have more liquid, twice as much, you might have twice as much vapor pressure. That is not true. So the amount doesn't affect, the size of container doesn't affect. Uh, sometimes it's also being phrased as surface area does not affect. The two things are temperature and IMF that affect. Now I'm going to give you one example. Uh, this, these relationships, I'm going to use them for a molecule uh, such as alcohol and ether. Now these two molecules have the same molecular formula, C4H10O. 
Now you should agree that this one here, the ether, only has one uh, sorry dipole dipole. On other hand, this alcohol has hydrogen bonding. So if IMF is is strong versus an IMF that is weak, this is what happens. If IMF is strong, you have low vapor pressure because they're not going to turn into gas. But ha what happens to boiling point? It should be high because the molecules are holding on to each other. What is delta H of vaporization for somebody who has IMF strong? It's also high. You need lots of energy, kilojoules, in order to convert it to gaseous. On other hand, if your IMF is weak, if you have, in this case, only dipole-dipole, your vapor pressure is high. They're not going to hold on to each other in liquid phase. They rather turn into vapor, which exert a pressure. Their boiling point is low. You can really uh, convert them to gas at low temperature. And delta H vaporization for them is also low. So these are the relationships. Sometimes graphically they will challenge you. They might give you two graphs like this, and they call one A, one B, which is temperature versus vapor pressure, and they will ask you which is which. Now you should accept the fact that if we have a cross section like this, you need more energy for somebody with strong IMF to create the same amount of vapor. So B should be the alcohol and A should be your ether.